Hey, how's it going? It's Chief Townsend from the CTO Advisor, and you're watching a special CTO dose. I have Don Foster, and this is a special CTO dose. Don has promised, he won't tell me what it is, but he's promised me some earth shattering news from Commvault. So, yeah, a first from Commvault. So, today we're announcing that Commvault is acquiring Hedvig, a software defined storage company. Uh, that basically delivers a distributed uh, software-defined storage platform that allows a number of storage use cases to be delivered for workloads. They can focus really well for secondary storage and consolidating sort of storage silos and platforms, uh, as well as they uh, uh, service a number of customers already today in delivering uh, storage for containers and some virtualization use cases. All right. Let me pause here for a sec because we're about to have a spirited conversation. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm just letting you know this is going to we're we're going to this is sponsored, but I'm about to come at you because this is one is big news for sure. uh, Hedge. The congrats to those guys. They've been on Tech Field Day. Uh, outside of an interesting name, they do have an interesting solution. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to throw a couple of IDC numbers out to you. One specifically, sure. So digitally transformed organizations, according to IDC spend 25 times more, not 25% more, but 25 times more on software-defined storage than their non-digitally transformed counterparts. Yep. So the from that sense, it's no surprise that Combo would like to look at Hedge and purchase Hedge. They, they are a very interesting software-defined storage solution, but Combo is a data protection company. You know, you guys have partnerships with HPE and all of the big that vendors, NetApp, yeah. all of them back uh, use Combo as the solution. Hedge, that sounds like a competitor to your number one partner. So let's let's talk about that right off the bat. Okay, exciting news! Congratulations first, but you know this CTO dose. I have to come back to you for sure. Are you guys entering the primary storage space? So, granted, the solution has use cases that will play in the primary solution space. Uh, but that's really not our core focus, right? The core focus here, and it's been kind of evident through our, our vision and some of our strategic roadmap plans. I mean, if you look back one year previous, right, when we mm -hmm. announced the hyperscale clients and our hyperscale solutions, we knew that having software-fine storage built into a data management platform is key for a couple of reasons. But one of the biggest ones is being able to move away from being just that backup and data protection company and helping customers realize there's a, a, a number of ways that you can actually unlock that information and we've been talking about open APIs and ways we can do that, but then using a software-defined storage layer that really makes it easy to open and unlock that data and start to use it for other items. So, so okay. Okay, so I get that. Your, your Hedge has software-defined storage capabilities. You're buying them for that software-defined storage Absolutely. capabilities. You don't necessarily need to compete with your uh, ecosystem to make that happen. So let's dive into kind of the technology for sure, side of it. Before we dive into the technology side of it, give you kind of the lay of the land of how the CTO advisor looks at data and data mobility, et cetera, et cetera. We have this model, this framework that we call the data infrastructure. Okay. Whether you're public cloud, on-prem, or multi-cloud, or hybrid cloud, if you have SaaS offering, the one thing consistent is your data across that. You need to be able to secure the data, you need to be able to move the data to where it needs to be moved to, uh, you need to be able to protect the data, et cetera. So in our model, data protection, data management falls under data infrastructure. Right. So it sounds like this addition is falling sweet into that whole, you know what, doesn't matter uh, where your data resides, we are here to help you protect and manage that data. Is that like the, the high level? Yeah, so you're, you're hitting really some of the key points of, of of why we acquired acquire Hedvig um, as our, our CEO states, right? There's five core shifts that we're seeing. A lot of it is about any customer being able to attach to the, the new technology that's relatively easy to use inside the cloud, right? All the different APIs and programmable interfaces that allow them to start to leverage things like AI and machine learning and all, all the, the new big data, um, big data, big data relevant services, what have you. So that allows small companies and large to be ultra competitive. Well, as they move towards the cloud, it's more cloud native uh, applications, it's multi-cloud, but then it's also, how do I take what I've got on premises and also map that and have a true understanding from on-prem into the multi-cloud space of what I'm managing and how I'm managing it. Um, so this sort of, this software-defined storage play 
allows us to accelerate that vision that we have on what we're doing with software combined storage inside of our platform, but more importantly, it allows us to solve for a couple of challenges that customers are seeing as they those are going in that direction. One, most customers as they go towards that more digitally transformed space, right? Like they're spending 25x more on software defined storage, etc. Well, they're probably doing that through a number of different solutions, especially in the management and protection side. So if you're trying to protect containers, protect this cloud, the SaaS environment, on-premises, you probably have a proliferation of different management tools, and that just drives management complexity. Right. So if the data is fragmented, the management tools are fragmented, and what that really means is you now have untenable you know, complexity that's being layered now on top of a already stressed out IT team that may or may not have the skills to continue growing the way the business pressures are, are pushing on them. So our view of this is exactly where you're at, right? The data, the, the data management infrastructure, this is a perfect play for that because we can now consolidate across the entire gamut of on-prem, even out to the edge, into the multi-cloud space. Okay. Even start to play in the application uh, sort of modernization projects for how containerization and microservices are being leveraged and pull that all together as one usable, manageable, understood infrastructure that can span any environment a customer wants to use. So, Don, I understand that. What, what we learned at Combo Gold last mm -hmm. year as part of the tech building day X experience that you guys help customers with the oil of their infrastructure data with metadata. Right. Like one of the biggest advantages of being a Cobalt customer for the past 20 years, I have 20 years of metadata. How does the Hevage acquisition build upon that capability? Now, that's, a, that's a great question and actually a, a core value prop to highlight on why this acquisition is so powerful. So within the Commonwealth data management platform, right, within our data platform, we have the ability to define policies for how data is stored. We have the ability to then map and basically drop and move information to whatever storage repository you choose. Be it object storage on-prem, spinning storage on-prem, off object storage in the cloud, we can basically map across the entire gamut. And we have the policies and the meta information about everything we own to do that. Um, where uh, things get really interesting though is you start to look at the infrastructure play that we've, we've defined the infrastructure offering that we have is basically through our hyperscale appliance, which is just essentially spinning disk that, yes, we can put some object interfaces on top of, and it has a software-defined play to it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much table table, table state, state, at right. point. Like, if you're a backup or data protection company, you have to have some type of physical platform, yeah. whether be it cloud or appliance, you have to have that. So that the Hedvig acquisition just accelerates our ability to apply sort of more robust technologies, interfaces, access points to that same sort of idea. So when you look at Hedvig for what they are for a software-defined storage platform, the way they can distribute and scale, you know, integrating that into our product is going to instantly give us a couple of things. One, we'll have the ability to map to any type of storage type. So if we wanted to have all flash in some areas of our, of our product to speed the way we can drive a DevOps and serve information back and forth, great, we can do that provision and really provide some of that capability. So let me break that down into like a typical use case. Sure. If I wanted to use my backup or my sec my backups as analytics mm -hmm. and I wanted to, you know, use leverage uh, I'm gonna get aggressive with this. Let's say that I wanted to use Intel Optane memory as a layer. Some of this might be in the future, but mm -hmm. let's talk about it. Okay. And then Intel driving innovation with SAP and and from a storage policy perspective, I want to say, you know what, that Optane layer, the fastest memory I want, I want my backup or my data set placed on, on that platform so I can get business answers as quickly as possible from data that I might have from 15 years ago. Yeah, if you could think about it, you could dual purpose that. And the Hedvig, the Hedvig distributed storage platform allows us to map into basically all types of storage, provide all the access points that you would expect for you know, interface in and out, whether it's block storage, file storage, object, etc. And then, of course, our storage policy, or our policy control that we have, would allow us to say, you know what, great, for that SAP environment, it's going to live right there on the fastest storage for however many copies, however many days, whatever it is that you need. But then behind that, we'll have the storage tier set up already where we can then put it to the next tier of spinning disk or then move it out to the cloud and let this one storage platform cross all the environments. So I've seen a lot of startups with like kind of this idea, but without the history of the data and mm -hmm. the and the you know kind of the trust of the enterprise. So this puts you on par with from a technology perspective with this part of the vision. However, 
I can't help but coming back to this point that this comes at a cost of some of your partnerships. Help me understand how Hedvich and this capability that you're going to have native into Commodore doesn't step on the toes of a NADAP or an HPE or give me an example of how you would integrate this into an existing customer that, that's you know all in on a three-part stor storage array. Sure. So I guess you mentioned HP and I'll just start there. So HPE happens to be one of uh, Hedvich's partners today. Uh, and they're one of our partners. Okay. So there's already some some complementary, um, you know, in the field for customers. There's some complementary actions that you know, obviously HP storage and Hedvig and what have you will 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 will, uh, will, will basically compete or 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 cooperate with. So right. To speak, right. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a whole slew of use cases for why you would need storage. Uh, if you've currently got a NetApp storage array and it's running primary workloads, chances are you're going to probably continue doing that. It exactly. fits the need, it probably performs great, it has snapshot capabilities, Commvault can control that. And in this case, you know, when customers already have that primary storage environment defined, yes, I mean, let that primary storage environment run. Allow Commvault to help to simplify the management and maybe some of the fragmentation of tools of what it takes to drive a snapshot or do replication. Let us basically link in with our APIs, how we can manage and control that data. And at that point, we would use Hedvig and the software-defined storage layer to simplify the way those backup copies are kept, how we can replicate, replicate the data across sites, uh, maybe make it available in a DR site or co-location, maybe work with a service provider if you're doing this as recovery as a service through a service provider. It's just another offering to extend that storage layer to other locations, not go after, per se, the, uh, the primary storage environment, because in many cases, that's already something that a customer has solved. They've got multi, multi, multi petabytes in, you know, in a large customer uh, environment. And we're going to be making sure that we can leverage the storage technology just to improve the way that data is being managed and then further used for other use cases down the line. So you're not necessarily getting into the data path. So from a presentation perspective, if I have a client, if I literally, if I have SAP, Hedvig in your vision that you just painted is not presenting the storage directly to SAP. You, it could. It can. It can. It has the capability. It has the capability. But if you want to map directly to your Primera or NetApp or whatever platform, you can still do that. Mm -hmm. The data mover within Hedvich and Commvault combined is just placing the data where it needs to be. You can choose to do it through the SDS and Hedvich, line on that storage array, mm -hmm. or you can do it through the storage array itself, it sounds like. Correct, right, right. So yeah. let me ask you, you know, the next question. I'm gonna try and get as much out of you. For sure. Okay, you know, for sure. We're gonna push this. Okay. When does it all happen? Like, you guys are acquiring them, uh, now you're making the announcement now. When do I see this functionality? Like what day day two after the acquisition closes and I contact my combo channel with sales guy and I say I want this that I saw on the CTO dose, right? When can I get it? Sure. So you know, you're right. So we just announced that the acquisition's occurring. And there is going to be some dev work, some integration work that has to happen between their platform, our platform, making sure that there's smooth handoffs between you know, both the, the head of software defined storage, Commvault, and really what that next evolution of us together looks like. Um, and really what the next Commvault looks like, too. Um, I can tell you, probably first and foremost, you know, starting, you know, day one, the first thing we're going to be looking at, in, and we've already been doing it, obviously, together with the head Hedvig engineers, is let's look at all the things that we need to do to ensure the experience from what you see and understand from Commvault, what you see and understand from Hedvig, become one simple experience together. And that's going to take some development work. That's going to take some time for us to ensure that, all right, we truly make these things from support to implementation to, you know, provisioning, retirement, you name it. That's all tied together as one. Right. So that's one key focus. That's going to take a little bit of time. Um, as you kind of look further on down that path is how do we make sure that we ingrain the architecture of Hedvig Software Defined Storage Platform as a part of what our data platform is. So we can start to use all the different tiers of storage all the different sort of access APIs, some of the controls they have like around snapshotting and, and, and even maybe some of the things they can do around duplication and whatnot within the, their own platform, plus take advantage of their scale, uh, scale, uh, scalability of just adding single nodes and growing that as you go. All fantastic use cases for a secondary storage platform. So that's probably the next step we look forward is like, okay, let's ingrain this into our platform and really kind of make that next turn of, of uh, you know, the next version, the next evolution of where hyperscale continues to grow and change and transform. Uh, and I think and as you see that start to go in that direction, 
I mean, we are at a point where storage and data management are starting to come to a crossroads. Right. We can see that. It, that is a sort of a collision course. Your competitors have to address this head on because data is data, and developers don't necessarily care where the developer the data is. They yeah. just want access to it in a timing factor, and whether that's sitting in uh, on on tape somewhere or in the cloud or on prem or on primary storage. They need to identify that data so they can get business questions answered. Right, and, and really in the container and, and application modernization space, you know, one of the core benefits everyone's looking for there is, all right, I need persistent storage to do this. All right, give me something that's cost effective that I can quickly provision, discard, recreate, et cetera. It's a perfect use case for software-defined storage. And I think as we see data management and we see storage sort of converge, I think that container space will probably be the first one where customers will say, hey, do I really need to have a, sec a separate silo to manage the data in the application space and manage what I'm doing for production and manage what I'm doing for uh, uh, you know backups or long-term retention and back into the cloud. Is there a way I can simplify all this as one? And what you'll probably find is you know as those things are converging, that's probably the initial space because Hadoop's technology is really strong when it comes to working with you know, Kubernetes and Docky, Do Docker. Uh, Mesophere, which I think they just changed their name to. I forget what it was called. Yeah, I forget. D2. D2, D2 IQ or yeah, something yeah, like that, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're, they already have sound practices for providing that level of persistent storage. Uh, and, you know, look, if we have customers that are looking to go in that direction, we'll absolutely show this as, as an option to them. So to kind of go back to the original question, when can I get this? Um, you know, the vision is the vision. It will be something we'll execute against. We've got a pretty solid plan on how we're going to get there and get there quickly. Um, just because we can see where the customer needs are, are, are going um, and that the fragmentation with new technologies is only getting worse around data, data management, and all the skills and tools that are required. So we've definitely, uh, we definitely have our, our foot on the gas pedal, so to speak, and we can see this becoming a, a really important thing um, you know, over the next, call it 6, 12, 18 months to start to showcase how these two technologies can really deliver a, an optimum solution from the secondary storage and data management space. Well, Don, I really appreciate the opportunity. One, you guys giving us this exclusive and for you, uh, allow me to beat you up a little bit. For sure. It was a fun conversation. For sure. If you enjoyed this conversation, you can see more of it online. Follow the hashtag CTO Dose on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Convault Go is just a little bit over a month from now, October 14th through the 16th, I yep. think. Yep. Uh, in Denver. In Denver. That's right. If you follow the CTO Advisor content for any period of time, you know that I've said that this market segment of data protection is on a collision course for data management. It is not a small segment. Data protection, I think, is a bad description of the segment. Uh, it is not about backup anymore. It's about being able to place data where it needs to be, when it needs to be, for the applications that require that require that data to answer tough business questions. Join the conversation. Hashtag CTO Dose Challenge Convo. I think they have a pretty decent comp, uh, record of the past couple of years of changing the perception of the company and starting to offer value for both traditional cu customers and new customers alike to show why you should take a look and have a conversation with Convo. I'd love to hear your feedback. Is Convo kind of that legacy company that you've always visioned? Or is Combo, you know, on par, if not ahead of its competition when it comes to innovation and vision, especially around this acquisition of Hedvig? Talk to you online at the CTO Advisor on Twitter, thectoadvisor.com.